What's up, weirdos? Apparently Lizzo is a fat, phobic, abusive boss. Which is interesting, considering that those are like the main things that she stands for. And the things she's done are kind of insane, but it actually opens up a broader conversation about, you know, let's just get into it. It's about damn time. In a minute, we're gonna get into some more, <laughs> some more like deep, you know, the thing. Basically, I wanna start off by showing how I found out about it. Uh, this post on impact it's like a multi-slide thing the same way that i found out about colleen so in this post right here actually wait a second barbie is officially the biggest opening for a female director in history can we please by the way i got the kennergy tattoo and mark ronson not only saw it he posted it as like the main post on his instagram feed talking about how grateful he is about the response of kennergy i am the one that he's grateful for. that is insane to me that's insane okay shut up who cares it's about damn time Okay, so it says right here in like the caption of it, three of Lizzo's former backup dancers have accused her of sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment. Here are the details. On Tuesday, which is August 1st, the day after my birthday, July 31st, when I turned 24 years old for a boy. On that day, three of Lizzo's former backup dancers accused her of sexual assault and creating a hostile work environment. The lawsuit was filed, okay. Okay, so the defendants are Lizzo, her production company, and then the dance captain. Oh my God, what a badass job title, but a bad, Person. In the lawsuit, three of Lizzo's backup dancers allege that at a club in Amsterdam, she pressured them to take turns touching a nude performer's breasts even after the dancers said no. Uh, yeah, I, uh, that's... Uh, okay. We're gonna get into talking about this, but let me just... Okay. Invited dancers to catch dildos launched from the performer's... <coughs> and eat bananas protruding from the performer's... And the dancers said no, and she pressured them. There's a lot more stuff that we're gonna talk about in a second, but I wanna take a pause and just talk about this. Because I think that this is a very important thing for people to see and like to understand how messed up it is and how it like actually is harassment. Because on the one hand, I see the argument for this. I can see where like Lizzo is coming from in this situation. I can totally see a world where it's like, ah, oh, it's girls night, we're going crazy. And I wanna be relatable with my dancers. So it's just, you know, it's me and the girls. But you're Lizzo and they're your employees. It's not like you and a bunch of your friends going there being like, do it girl, do it girl, do it girl. That's what I do when I normally go out. I go, do it girl. And then my friend Ben, stands there. But for the things that she's like pressuring them to do for like girls night fun, it's like, yeah, touch that boob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but no, no. Cause in your mind, it's like, it's girls night and we're just a bunch of friends like having fun. We're gonna go crazy. We're going wild on girls night. But the reality of the situation is that's your employee and that's a naked person's boob that you want them to touch. And when you strip it down to, you know, what is happening, that sounds insane. And that doesn't even touch catching dildos out of performers. You put a woman with a vagina in front of me with a dildo and shooting it out and then say, hey, catch that. Ma'am, I am running away. And if I'm there with my boss and he's like, hey, boys night, we're just hanging out. Hey, bro, catch that dragon thing. I'm going to say no and I'm going to feel uncomfortable. And that's my boss. These dancers who are pressured to do this are being pressured by their boss to catch, you know, silicon. Mm, I'm through hickey for you. I'm through. To catch them from, like, that's an inherently sexual situation. And it doesn't matter if it's girls' night and if it's fun girls' night. Oh, we're drinking wine. We're going crazy. We're having cocktails. Woo! Hey, there's a movie. Grab it. Hey, let's make out. Hey, you better not do that. You better not. Even if they're not your employees, by the way. Don't pressure people. Don't peer pressure people. And stand up against bullies. It's about damn time. And even that one does not touch asking your employees to eat bananas out of a woman's vagina. That's so inappropriate. By the way, so inappropriate. I do not care if it's girls night. I do not care if you're having fun. It's like bachelorette party vibes. You can't pressure people to do that. Basically what I'm saying is don't be James Charles at the lunch of Tate, Tantana? It's not Tana. I know, I can picture her. She's the she's the sugar bear. It was the Bi Sisters, the one where she was like, and you were talking about sucking and it was at my birthday. Tati, Tati Westbrook, Tati Westbrook. Don't be James Charles at Tati Westbrook's birthday party. How does that relate to what I was talking about? Oh yeah, trying to get people to catch uh, dildos and eat bananas out of it. <clears throat> trying to like mutter my words a little bit so that I don't get, you know, age restricted. And then finally, asking her security staff members to strip for them? Hey, 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 hey. Girls night, more like gonna be locked up for a lot of nights after this crime. If you're doing this, like stop. By the way, so bad because she is their boss, because they're her employees and she is their boss and she's pressuring them to do these things. That's very bad. In addition to that, even if you're not employed, don't peer pressure people to do this. This is so messed up and it is still like harassment. And I know it's like, oh, but we're friends. We're just going crazy. Seriously, think twice before you even approach anything as pressure in a situation like this. There's a difference between encouraging somebody who wants to do something and being like, yeah, you can do it, you can do it, versus, hey, eat that banana out of her. Oh, I don't want to. 
Very different situations. So that's that, but that's only one part of the whole lawsuit. That's like one tiny aspect. It's about damn time. But first, real quick, the sponsor of today's video is Sundays, Food for Dogs. My little guy right here, Gustav, he was struggling a lot recently with being sick and actually completely losing his appetite. I picked him up from a dog resort where I left him for a few days and he had gotten some kind of ear infection, was coughing up a lot, completely lost his appetite, completely lost his will to drink water, and it was almost 48 hours straight where he would not eat or drink anything. I was getting really worried about him, but Sundays for Dogs came in the mail that day. And I kid you not, I opened it up immediately, put it in a bowl, and he immediately went and ate the entire thing. Thing. Sundays for Dogs is a very healthy dog food that ships straight to your door. It is so convenient. It doesn't require any refrigeration. It doesn't require any sort of like crazy preparation process. It's made of a very short list of human grade ingredients and it's 90% meat, 10% vegetables, 0% synthetic nutrients. I've always wanted to give Gus the best and it makes me feel good knowing that he is actually enjoying his meals and actually thriving and living healthier. I've already noticed Gus is more energetic. He has an easier digestive process, if you know what I'm talking about. They air dry it so that it's easy for you and and also is great for your dog. All that said, it's still very affordable. It's 40% cheaper than the leading brands. And not only is it more affordable, you can get 35% off your first order. Just go to sundaysfordogs.com forward slash Cooper or use code Cooper at checkout. Let me take these sunglasses off and get back to where we were. So the dancers also alleged that Lizzo subjected them to an excruciating 12 hour audition rehearsal. Yo, by the way, you don't need to dance for 12 hours to prove you can dance. You just give me 30 seconds on that dance floor and show me your moves and I'm gonna know what you're about. I'm about this. I'm about this. I'm about a little bit of this. A little bit of this. I'm really about this. But really, I can get, I can get involved with this. I can get involved with this. That's all you need. I don't need 12 hours of that, okay? Okay. It's about damn time. Lizzo allegedly planned to fire and send them home if their performance wasn't good enough. First of all, the 12 hour audition rehearsal is insane. But if somebody is not dancing well enough and they're hired to be a dancer, don't you fire somebody if they're a bad dancer? and your, the job is dance. She allegedly planned to fire and send them home if their performance wasn't good enough. That's what having a job is, isn't it? When I was a pool boy, my bosses allegedly planned to fire and send me home if I didn't clean the pools good enough. But, but that's, in a, so I don't know what that point necessarily is. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. I could be missing something. Dancers didn't use the bathroom out of fear of losing their jobs. And one dancer, Crystal Williams, argued to Lizzo that they weren't drinking on the job. In response, Lizzo allegedly mocked her and then fired her five days later. So firing people for like personal vendetta Okay, yeah, maybe it's just the phrasing in this Maybe it's just the wording of that first one where they were like they were gonna fire the dancers if they were bad at dancing Maybe should have left that bullet point out when the other stuff is like very bad anyways <laughs> I don't think that you needed to add anyways I probably am just not understanding it correctly, but in the context of everything I can understand why it's like you can ask us to dance for 12 hours and then fire us unpaid If that's what the situation is they worded it poorly and I think that that's bad But I don't know if that's the situation. Oh my god breathe <sighs> Hey weirdos. One dancer, Ariana Davis, recorded a rehearsal due to health concerns from an eye condition. In response, Lizzo allegedly called out her weight gain, berated her, fired her. Davis was then forced to stay in a room while a security staff member searched her phone to make sure the footage was deleted. She's now suing Lizzo's production company for false imprisonment? What? False imprisonment? You can do that to somebody? I guess, yeah, if you imprison them and you're not allowed to, that's false imprisonment. I guess, hey, wow, you learn something new every day. And I learned that Lizzo, apparently, according to sources, falsely imprisoned this woman. By the way, after this has come out, there's been a cacophony, a cacophony, a cacophony of people talking about how Lizzo was fat phobic and shamed them for their weight. A lot of her backup dancers talking about how she called them out on gaining weight. Using my words carefully, because I don't want to be bad. Is it? The whole um, thing like with Lizzo, like her uh, platform that she talks about a lot is how she's healthy and you can be healthy and big and that fat phobia has no place in the world and that, you know, talking about somebody's body is, you know, shouldn't do that. Isn't that like her whole thing? And isn't also she, like I'm looking at this picture of Ariana Davis right here. It's not like she has a different body type than Lizzo. I, w I w it's like, is it the pot calling the kettle black? I don't want to use that analogy. It's hypocritical. It's hypocritical is what it is. Especially because she has made such an effort to like, her PR is so I exercise for hours every day. I'm very active and I eat very healthily. That's what she puts out into PR a lot. And a lot of people get rubbed the wrong way because the response to that happening is like, no, there's no way that you're like incredibly active and you eat incredibly healthy like you're saying that you do. People say that and then they're like, well, you can't possibly like remain at that size if all that's true. And my situation is calorie deficit, like burning itself. That's what a lot of people say in response to Lizzo's PR about how she's very active and very healthy. When in reality, which I feel like is somebody who's not affected by like 
fat phobic standards and judgment. I just feel like the focus should be more on no matter what you look like, no matter what your weight is, you are just as valuable and just as deserving of love. And you should also be able to love yourself without being, you know, told, no, hate yourself and get better. Like that you should not have to exist in that way. It's so much deeper than just like, oh, well, just be healthy, be healthy. Yeah, everybody knows that. Shut up, it's so stupid. And the whole idea of people, you know, body shaming, let people live their own lives. You have no reason to hate anybody. And that is such a stupid, stupid reason to hate somebody that they're like you think that they're not healthy and even if somebody's not healthy okay they're still worthy of love and being seen as a human being on the same level as you and i always felt that the pr that lizzo put out was less that and more no i am healthy i do exercise a bunch you can't say all those things about me it's like well okay if that's true is it true for everybody else no, you're not worthy of love because you eat healthily and exercise, no matter what your size is. You are worthy of love because you are worthy of love. So I don't know, I've always just had a little bit of like a, I didn't love the conversation around her and her weight. Not that it matters, not that I care, not that it needs to like be, oh great for, but the thing is for it to be such an integral part of her brand and her PR and everything that she talks about, to then go to somebody with a similar or like skinnier frame and like call them, you, you know, fat. For Lizzo to say that after everything that Lizzo stands for, like that, was insane to me. The stuff earlier that's like the, the, the girls night, but really it's just sexual harassment, that I could see fitting, like the puzzle pieces fit with Lizzo. But then this, it's so corroborated. So I'm not saying I doubt this. I'm just saying that it's very, you know, weird for it to be coming from Lizzo. It's about damn time. The dancers also alleged that they experienced racist and fat phobic discrimination at the hands of the company tour members. When asking for downtime compensation at a rate of 50% of weekly pay, they were told that they were being disrespectful before being offered only 25% by the accountant. In the lawsuit, they state only the dance cast comprised of full-figured women of color were ever spoken to in this manner. Ooh, so the skinny white girls were getting 50% weekly pay when the, in their downtime? And the full-figured women of color were getting half of that? Is that what they're saying? I don't know if this is worded trickily. I can totally believe that happening though, because you know, our history with full-figured women of color, not our, but I mean like culture. I don't, not our, but like, our culture. I love full-figured women of color. I also find women with like Eastern European or like kind of Canadian accents very pretty. And guys with Jamaican accents are very handsome. I'd say Filipino anybody. You talk to me with a Filipino accent, we're shaking hands, we're exchanging meaningful words with each other, and we're caring about each other into our deaths. That being said, so Lizzo didn't pay full-figured women of color. What's next? It's about damn time. Additionally, Lizzo's former before, before what is going on? Additionally, additionally, sorry, I have a stutter. And that's true. I have a kind of like a, I stutter over my words and this is like a tongue twister. Thank y'all weirdos so much for letting that slide and being cool with the way I talk because sometimes I just get annoyed with myself and I feel like, oh, you know, just say it right, say it right. Additionally, Lizzo's former performers claimed that their dance captain, Shirlene Quigley, was sexually inappropriate. Oh my God, yeah, of course, with a name like Shirlene Quigley, how could she not be? I know if your name is Shirlene Quigley, you're over there being a creep. Shirlene Quigley? You're gonna tell me a woman named Shirlene Quigley is a stand-up citizen? I don't think so, pal. According to plaintiffs, Shirlene Quigley described sexual fantasies, simulated oral sex, commented on the sex lives of other dancers. Okay, again, 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 again. This in a friend group. Listen, if, you, if you're a bunch of ladies hanging out in your friend group, by the way, you don't have to be a lady. You don't even have to be a lady to have friends. That's true. But if you're in your friend group talking about your sexual fantasies and simulating <laughs> anything like that, or talking about, you know, other people's, it's totally different if it's your friends in a casual friend hanging out environment. But these people like Shirlene Quigley don't know how to like draw the barrier. By the way, if talking like that about your friends makes your friends uncomfortable, shut up. It's like, shut up. But the reason that this is so much worse is you can't tell your dance captain, great name, terrible woman. You can't be a dance captain and then talk to your dancers about all that stuff. Cause it's a HR violation. I'm sure, I am sure. By the way, in so many of y'all's work environments, you're thinking right now, this happens all the time in my work environment. You know, that's, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be doing like, your boss shouldn't be talking like that. That's just kind of the situation of how it, you know, just because you're in entertainment, just because you're dancing, just because you're artists, doesn't mean that you can talk about blowing guys. When I'm talking to the people with like, with my necklace company, you know what I'm not doing? Hey, you wanna talk about blowing dudes? I do not ever mention that, ever. I never even bring up boobs. Not even once, twice, three times, four times, not even five times have I ever brought up boobs to anybody that I work with my necklace company, okay? Not once. It's not hard to compartmentalize, in my opinion. And I hope that this is a wake up call for a lot of people in Shirley and Quigley and Lizzo's position because being friends, hanging out with the girls, you can't take that vibe 
to a inappropriate place with your employees, especially if you're pressuring. It's weird, dude. It's weird. I could see Lizzo bouncing back from this and being like, I didn't know, but it's weird. And I really hope people learn from this. It's about damn time. Okay, so the dancers who are suing Lizzo and Shirlene Quigley, their lawyer, Ron Zambrano. By the way, maybe the best names in any lawsuit ever. Ron Zambrano? That is a dude name. Ron Zambrano, Shirlene Quigley, Lizzo. This is absolutely bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. What the hell am I talking about? The stunning nature of how Lizzo and her management team treated their performers seems to go against everything Lizzo stands for publicly. That's what I said. While privately, she weight shames her dancers and demeans them in ways that are not only illegal, but absolutely demoralizing. Really, it's the demoralizing that we're after, not the illegal harassment. No, that's a pretty good statement because, yeah, it's succinct. It's pretty succinct in the way that it does that. Kinda lets you know what the whole friggin' thing's about. Okay, so now for the juicy, disturbing stuff. So remember when we were talking about that Amsterdam nightclub where she was doing all of the insane things? The catching products out of performers, areas, eating bananas out of, you know. This is her talking about her excitement for going to that on a radio show. It's about damn time. Yeah, you and then you have the banana, banana in the, in yeah, the yeah, yeah. coochie. And, and ping pong balls. And you have to go. And, yes. And that's what to, I want to do. Then you have to eat it. I need my potassium, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> my poos potassium. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh. 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 Okay. Yeah, so... Oh, so why didn't you eat it then, Lizzo? If you're so excited about getting that potassium. If you wanted that potassium inside of your nutritional system. How come you were yelling at your dancers to eat it instead? Uh, and this just really goes to reaffirm the point that I was making earlier, where I don't think that she thinks that what she's done is insane. I think that her demeanor in this pretty clearly shows that she doesn't view it as bad behavior. She was publicly talking about her plans to do it, and then she went and did what she said she was gonna do. Now, of course, in this video, she didn't say, yeah, I'm gonna pressure my dancers to do it too. But it's like, oh, let's go out. Let's go to this SEX show in Amsterdam. It's gonna be crazy. And then they're there and she's like, ah, this is great, eat it, eat it. But it's not hanging out with your friends, having a crazy, go lucky, happy day time. And then today, oh my God, Wednesday? The other stuff dropped Tuesday, today's Wednesday, new stuff. There's more receipts. Filmmaker Sophia Nali Allison also comes forward about Lizzo's mistreatment of her in 2019. She posted this on her Instagram story. I usually do not comment on anything pop culture related, but in 2019, I traveled a bit with Lizzo to be the director of her documentary. I walked away after about two weeks. I was treated with such disrespect by her. Damn. By the way, a documentary about Lizzo in 2019? I didn't know that that happened. Was that good? Aren't documentaries about artists normally made after- Or unless it was a tour documentary. Shut up. Maybe it was a tour documentary. Hey, shut up. What about the Bieber doc? What about Taylor Swift stock? What about the One Direction doc? You know what? Let's, you know what? But during that time, the director is saying, I was treated with such disrespect by her. I witnessed how arrogant, self-centered, and unkind she is. I was not protected and was thrown into a shitty situation with little support. My spirit said to run as fast as you f can, and I'm so grateful I trusted my gut. She said I felt gaslit and was deeply hurt, but I feel- Why do I need to say- She said blah blah blah. I'm saying it. It's not- It's not like you think that it's a different- That's so annoying. I'm so sorry. Reading these reports made me realize how dangerous of a situation it was. This kind of abuse of power happens far too often. Much love and support to the dancers. Pop tings! That's just the Twitter account. So it adds up. So that's just, you know, another piece of evidence. Another- 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 Another person throwing their experience into the communal bonfire of hate. Which- I say, hey, feels pretty well deserved. Hopefully she learns from this. Hopefully she stops being such a narcissistic jerk. I hope she realizes that maybe boundaries are good. Her playing a James Madison flute and then going backstage and saying that all of her dancers are fat. Just the uh, little impression. Also, <laughs> I saw this. This is so funny. This is great. So these are some lyrics from a song and a music video that she'd done that are a little bit topical now. All the rumors are true, yeah. What you heard, that's true, yeah. I fuck him and you, yeah. If you believe I do that. So what she's saying right there is, the rumors are true, I did all of it. And if you believed it, then you suck. I don't really understand the lyricism of that, but I don't know if Lizzo is, is she regarded as a great lyricist? Because this seems bad, I don't know. I don't wanna, I don't wanna dogpile her for everything. I'm sure she's great. Her and Barbie, she was hilarious in Barbie. Is that, you know, the song is Barbie's waking up? Hilarious. I love Lizzo. I did. I don't now. But that doesn't mean that I can criticize her lyrics for the pet. Anyways, these lyrics are whack. I did all that, but I didn't do it. A little bit of Colleen Ballinger, a little bit of toxic gossip train. That's what she should do. She should come out and go, All aboard the toxic go That's, 
it's just at some point I just gotta give up. It's about damn time. Anyways, it continues to the great part. So all the rumors are true, but if you believed it, you're an idiot. Had to cut some hoes loose, yeah. Indy ain't no loose lips. Not them hoes trying to sue me. Bitch, I don't give two shits. Does she still not give shits? So you had to cut some of them loose. You made them sign NDAs because their lips could be loose, but you don't care. I wonder if you care about what you put those women through. I wonder if you have any guilt about what you put those women through. Judging off of this, I would say, seems like she don't care, seems like she don't like them, seems like she narcissistic doesn't mind. Doesn't mind being mean is okay with being rude. I wanted to show this just to say that these are the types of things that just because Lizzo is getting canceled now doesn't mean that you can like, she fat shames, it's okay to fat shame her. And I tried to be very careful with my words to make sure that it didn't come across like I was doing that in this video. But I just wanted to show this to kind of show you like the full spectrum of what's happening in response to this. Cause these videos are being shared by people who would have loved and supported Lizzo prior to this. But these are people who are drama fiends and love uh, a little bit of, I guess, is this dark humor? I don't know, this feels mean, this feels like bullying, and it's not, and I'm not gonna laugh. Since Lizzo getting canceled for fat shaming, let me bring this clip back. Okay, so there's the little golf cart, and she's sitting on the back right now. It's not funny. Wait, what happened? It's not funny though. Okay, so she's sitting in the back and then they try to drive. I'm trying to say that this is the type of thing that's not funny. That's just I forgot, I forgot how far back the golf cart went. And that's humiliating and very sad that that's on the internet forever for her. She's never gonna be able to forget that. I should not have showed that clip. I should have used a different example. It's just blurry. It's the, the reason it's funny is because it's blurry. The situation isn't funny. That would be very embarrassing. That would be very humiliating. And it's not, you know, the joke isn't, oh, Lizzo, you Lizzo. But it is interesting to think about that clip happening. And then she goes back inside and tells all of her dancers that they're gaining too much weight and they're not gonna need to be fired. It's not okay to retroactively fat shame her when I think that like the whole idea of being accepting and loving over people of any body is great and it should be that way. We should be loving of everybody. Nobody should feel like they are lesser than because they're not fit. Fit always meaning skinny. Just because somebody it doesn't fit into that doesn't mean that you have to look at them as like, oh, a project who needs to get their life together, otherwise they're worthless. That's stupid, that's dumb. Maybe the point of this clip and the other stuff that's like fat shaming her in a much more overt and bad way, I think that those, they're an example of how that's the easiest way to make fun of somebody. That's the easiest thing to do and it's the easiest thing to point out because it's like, an unmistakable thing that people are very insecure about and would be very damaging and harmful. So pointing that out to a bad person in a lot of people's minds is like, oh no, it's okay because they're bad so I can say whatever I want about them. But yeah, okay, Lizzo did bad things and I would say that she was a bad person for doing those things. She can be better, she can be a good person, like she can grow and stuff. But just because somebody, you know, at that time is a bad person, it doesn't mean that you can then just go unload every single insult onto them. That isn't about the things that she's done that make her bad. She's bad because of all the things that she's done to her dancers and her employees. And the, you know, the director treating everybody with disrespect. That's why she's bad. That's what we can like make fun of her for. I don't think that making fun of her for being fat is something that is applicable here. It's cheap, it's stupid, and then your friends who aren't skinny will also see that and then feel hurt. And it's stupid and it's dumb. It is funny to see that clip though and to think that that humiliation and that embarrassment that she takes, she just goes in on the loan sit on her dancers. That's so f Like the idea that you do that and then you're like, come on, everybody love everybody, come on. But then privately are actually dealing with it by attacking the people who are beneath you. That's insane. Peak hypocrite, peak narcissist. But I think that there is a world where she can come back from this. I think her path to redemption <laughs> seems a lot more likely than somebody like Oh, I don't know. Ezra Miller? If Ezra Miller is back in a movie, then I don't know who hired their dumbass. But Lizzo, I think, is coming across in this as a bullheaded, narcissistic, egotistical, diva, fat shaming, sexually harassing, abusive employer. Maybe she's not gonna come back. And if she does, I don't think that this is something that kind of goes away, especially because like almost all of her like PR and like her public persona is about loving yourself and like eating healthy, living healthy and being, you know, happy at any weight. For this to come out, her entire branding of all of that stuff is totally worthless. Okay, okay, uh, it's the next day. It's a couple days after I was filming that and there has been an update and a response by Lizzo. So I wanna make sure that we cover her response so this doesn't feel like out of date. So she tweeted 
tweeted this out in response. I'm gonna read the whole thing. These last few days have been gut-wrenchingly difficult and overwhelmingly disappointing. My work ethic, morals, and respectfulness have been questioned. My character has been criticized. Usually I choose not to respond to false allegations, but these are as unbelievable as they sound and too outrageous to not be addressed. So what we're starting with here is, sorry, I'm unbuttoned, denial. But there's been so many stories. So by the way, can we just start off right off the bat? She's lying. It's, it's they're not fake. There are so many people who have said the same exact things about her with completely different, you know, backgrounds, but having the similar terrible experiences with her. So it, they're not lies. These sensationalized stories are coming from former employees who have already publicly admitted that they were told their behavior on tour was inappropriate and unprofessional. More inappropriate and unprofessional than pressuring people to put bananas from performers bloop, up there bloop. and, you know, everything else. As an artist, okay, here we go. I have always been very passionate about what I do. I take my music and my performances seriously because at the end of the day, I only want to put out the best art that represents me and my fans. What the hell are you talking about? Nobody cares. It's about damn time. That's your art. That's your music. It's great. It's a bop. You're so successful, but okay, that doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. It's about damn time. With passion comes hard work and high standards, except for yourself. Sometimes I have to make hard decisions, but it's never my intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable or like they aren't valued as an important part of the team. Okay, well, you still can't take your employees and put them in sexual situations and then pressure them into engaging into those situations. So, okay, I'm not here to be looked at as a victim. Nobody is, by the way. No, no. What does she think she's Miranda Sings right now? I know a lot of people are looking at me like a victim. And I just want to say, nobody's looking at, Why would you say that in an apology where you just deny everything? Like, shut up. But I also know that I am not the villain that people in the media have portrayed me to be these last few days. I'm very open with my sexuality and expressing myself, but I cannot accept or allow people to use that openness to make me out to be something I am not. Hey, guess what? You can be open and crazy and wild and do whatever you want, but you can't then pressure your employees to engage in the same behavior just because you're being a friend to them. You're not their friend and you being open about sexuality and sexuality shouldn't have any stigma to it. There shouldn't be anything wrong with expressing your sexuality anyway. Yeah, no, there's not. But if you being open and expressive with your sexuality is making your employees uncomfortable, especially when you're pressuring them to do those open sexual things, that is, by the way, sexual harassment. I can't go harass a woman and then go, come on, sexuality shouldn't have a stigma. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, we're just free love. You don't get to be the, I'm a leftist. I think the sexuality is so perfect. And that means I can sexually harass anyone. If they don't like it when I sexually harass them, then it's because they're not open about their sexuality. What? Shut up. There is nothing I take more seriously than the respect we deserve as women in the world, I know what it feels like to be body shamed on a daily basis and would absolutely never criticize or terminate an employee because of their weight. And then explain why so many of your dancers talk about being fired and treated differently for being overweight and you explicitly mocking them for being overweight and telling them to get in shape when they're overweight. While you, at the same time, are not in a position to criticize people or their weight. Weight doesn't equal value and if they can put up the dance moves that they signed up to do, then they, they can, that's fine. You know what I mean? I'm hurt. But I will not let the good work I've done in the world to be overshadowed by this. I want to thank everyone who has reached out in support to lift me during the up to lift me up during this difficult time. So you are the victim. I'm hurt. I'm not the victim though, but I am hurt, and I'm gonna put in a lot of work because this is all. I don't want to be overshadowed by all this this hurt that's being caused to me. Are you out of your mind? You just said that you're not a victim. So if you're not a victim, take this last page out. So if you're not a victim, this is gone because this is the language someone uses when they're trying to victim of victim 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 victimize themselves. And they're trying to victimize themselves. I wonder where she came up with that phrasing though, to, you know, deny everything and also say, I'm so sorry, but I didn't do anything. Actually, she didn't even apologize. She just straight up said, that's not true. Even though everyone that she's worked for is seemingly, you know, confirming it with similar stories. So how did she come up with this phrasing? By hiring the attorney that represents Chris Brown, Brian Singer, Johnny Depp, Charlie Sheen, Bill Cosby, Jonah Hill. Oh, okay. So the go-to guy when you're, I don't want to say that this is the lawyer for supervillains, but yeah. And by the way, I understand everybody has a right to an attorney. You know, and being a defense attorney is a very important part of the criminal justice system. And the government prosecution and the, you know, the prison complex system, it's so aggressive and punitive and terrible that having a defense lawyer is like a vital thing. And defense lawyers are good. That being said, defense lawyers will also be defending some of the worst people in American history. And she hired somebody who clearly is very good at defending those P.O. Because all of these people are kind of, you know, not completely effed. Some of them are actually doing pretty great. So I think that's interesting. And then, by the way, the attorney for the dancers who saw Lizzo's response said this. This is the dude who's suing Lizzo on behalf of the dancers. Given Lizzo is denying that any of this happened, let's take it to trial. More witnesses are coming forward every day corroborating the plaintiff's allegations. So we're looking forward to facing Lizzo and her team in court. Yeah, they're going to get a fat check. Yeah, they're going to get a fat settlement. Yeah, that's going to be a payout. And by the way, they deserve it for all the crap that she put them through. And by crap, I mean harassment. 
And if you ever had doubt on voting for Joe Biden and electing a real one, he's no longer following Lizzo. Joe Biden stands with the people. The streets are saying that she's fat phobic. Hey, I gotta unfollow her. I shout out Joe, I, she, she's out of here. We're gone, we're done. I don't even want to have her anymore down in South Carolina where we're around. I love Joe Biden because he talks exactly like me. Anyways, so that's the update. Back to me a couple days ago, giving you the outro. <laughs> it's about damn time. But I don't know. You know what? L let's let our PR cook, see what happens. I'm sure the people are gonna forget about it, unfortunately. But you know what? Nah. I've said what I've said. You know what my opinion is. And I love y'all weirdos so much. Please subscribe. Because I like Lizzo's music. And I saw so much hate for her online over the past, you know, since she's been popular. And I think that it's stupid and mean and annoying and lame and like, just grow up, leave her alone. Who cares? But then to see that she's like getting in trouble for a lot of other things that aren't necessarily even like aspects of her personality that she's hidden. She doesn't come across as the most humble person, which is fine. And she also comes across as kind of like a party crazy person, which, you know, sure, fine.